New in the building? Yeah, I just moved in Monday. Everybody's been real nice. Well, that's because you have big jugs. <laughs> Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to an all-new Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brenda McCorkle, and Mike, believe the hype, Crawford. What's up, dude? What up, Brenda McGregor? How you doing today? I do not look like <laughs> Conor McGregor, you fuck nut. <laughs> Stay in your lane, bro. Stay in your lane. Uh, I do. I try my best to do so, man. But how you doing today? I'm good. I uh, Speaking of staying in your lane, there was six cars on the way to my son's drop-off this morning for school. That were literally like overlapping the other lane, like egregiously. Like probably a quarter of their car was in the other lane. I'm like, what the fuck is going on this morning? I was very upset, very upset. To the point, like I text you a picture of one person. I was like, they, like at a red light, they were like almost halfway in the left turn lane, halfway going straight. I'm like, fuck this person. So I pulled up right next to him to make sure both of our things were beeping, like our mirrors are almost touching. She's, like, looking over at me, like, what are you doing? I'm like, look at what you're doing. You're in the wrong spot, not me. Trust me, I'm not worried about scratches on this thing. I bet you're worried about scratches on your rover, though. It is morning time. People are driving slow and taking their kid to school. You got you to relax, man. That's not a good, like, aggressive driving time. Like it that. wasn't aggressive. They were at a stoplight. I pulled up very slowly, but just very close to their car. Dude, I cannot wait. Until I have enough money to have, like, unlimited insurance package to where I don't care what my insurance premium is. And I've had this dream for years. Get, like, whatever the new style truck is. But, like, if I were to do it today, like a Ford Raptor with one of those front, you know, grills that you could just push shit around in. And anybody that drove in a dumb way, I'd just purposely, you know, not hurt them, but, like, damage their car a little bit. Just to make their lives miserable, be like, I have 17 of these. I don't really care. You would, you would just give out money just to be able to run people off the road. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Gladly. It's been my dream for years. <laughs> years. To have that and the y'all perfect better, size bus. Yeah, I better hope our plan doesn't work and we don't get rich, baby. Because oh, there will be cars all just get wood. dinged up all over the place. I'll stop pissing <laughs> on them. I'll just start hitting them. <laughs> Move, get out of the way. Uh, you know, window, my uh, funny enough, dude, is my <laughs> old boss used to live uh, in a space that had like kind of like a bunch of ranch area, farm area stuff. Um, and when he was a kid in like high school, he had a Jeep and he would push other cars that were parked alongside of the road into like the ditch, like the swale for every all the water to run out. Like he would just go up, and just whoop. Next thing you know, like, he would damage your car, obviously. I think he flipped one or two of them over because they just went in the ditch and rolled. Like, that's high school fun. <laughs> Bro, that's not fun. How fucking somebody fucked would... up is that? <laughs> yes, and if somebody catches you, they are going to seriously hurt you, my friend. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think somehow word got around town. And it was like, hey, you better stop doing that because people are wise to it now. Cars aren't just falling in fucking ditches when it rains for no reason. You know what I mean? Like the worst thing that. like the worst thing that we did back in the day was throw <laughs> eggs at cars. I think we did rocks. Oh, um, rocks are bad. I know the maestro used to like roll up brake liners. This is also back in the nineteen fucking sixties or whatever. Roll up brake <laughs> liners and throw them at uh, cars driving by it to pop the hubcaps off. So we'd use rocks, too, if they couldn't find any brake liners, but that would just pop them off right there. And then they'd run for their lives when, you know, people got That's out of the That's a hell of a aim to be able to hit a, a hubcap. It was also in the, in the 60s, man. They didn't have shit to do except for throw <laughs> rocks. Might as well throw it at something moving. So if a car went down this road at once an hour, man, that was that was pay dirt. <laughs> 
We did. Yeah, <laughs> but to knock the hubcap off from it. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the challenge good. there. That's that's the accuracy. It's not fun just to ding up people's cars. you got to try and, you know, get some aim in there. So you just used to throw rocks at cars? <laughs> yeah, just for no reason. We were bad. Like, how old were you? I don't know, probably like 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Man. That's not Pretty. I mean, yeah, that's not too bad. But, like, as cars drive by or... How stupid where we for throwing our food, eggs, and apples at cars? Like, that's stupid. Well, see, here's the thing. I, is, I did that shit in, like, high school because we were trying to start fights. <laughs> <laughs> so we would... We didn't do it, like, standing on the corner of the street. We were in a different... We were in one of my friend's cars. There was two of them that could drive. I couldn't drive in high school. I didn't have a license. And so they would alternate. That made me the gunner, all-time gunner. And I had the best arm out of the group. So we would go and, like, drive around. And then any of these hot rockets with the blue lights and the fancy, you know, coffee can mufflers, those were our targets, dude. So it was like we just drive around. I'd be, you know, either high or whatever, like, you know, tuned up. And then we'd just drive around looking for those cars and just start chucking them. And then we realized later that eggs... Uh, damage the paint on cars. So we didn't want to do that. We were just trying to stir up some shit. So then we switched to cinnamon rolls. But cinnamon rolls are way more intense. You got to be way closer for a cinnamon roll. So we would... <laughs> when, I, when I was in high school, with paintball guns, man. And I didn't even know that these dudes were like one of them. Like we were trying to like start some beef and trying to fight. Because I was new to the city. This is when I moved to Pennsylvania. Okay. We're riding around, and I'm thinking we're shooting paintball guns. That dude that clearly like go to another school we don't like, but I'm thinking we're just like shooting paintballs at him. Well, my gun is paintball guns. One dude shooting pennies, the oh. other dude shooting marbles. <laughs> oh! When I tell you that I when I found this, I was like, bro, like we tore some, like some stuff got torn. Yeah, up, bro. I'm like, bro. If they find out, y'all, we did this. Oh, I mean, that's I wasn't really, you know, like, yeah, that was in some old. Dude, that'll kill somebody. Town. A marble will that kill, kill somebody. No, we didn't hit a person. We were shooting like housing and cars, bro. Okay. Like, people that like run like, past damn, people's houses. Yeah, I'm like, bro, why are y'all sh- like y'all are trying to hurt people? You hit somebody in the face with a marble from a paintball gun. Hey, you might could kill him. Like you might yeah. not need a bullet, bro. The worst we ever did with paintball guns was because we used to go paintballing quite a bit, like at the actual fields and shit. And then we just started going in the desert because we were like, we don't need to pay people to run around dirt. We live in Palmdale. There's dirt everywhere. So we were just like, but when we would go to certain fields that we knew there, every field has. Like, two or three grown men that are playing capture the flag like they're SEAL Team 6. And it's like, you know what, bros? There are a lot of kids here. Like, you don't need to be so incredibly rude, like, when you're fucking (laughs) tapping people out and shit like that. So we just started, we would freeze one bag of paintballs and keep it in the cooler. And if there are any of those assholes there, we're like, you know what? I know that I'm not doing shit this round except for hitting that motherfucker. So we just load up our <laughs> hopper with 200 fucking paintballs or 150, however much it would hold. And then it was just seek and destroy one person. And then when they're like, you know, you get shot if they do a paint check. It's like, you know, you get shot. The referee comes over, checks if they're checked or not. Anytime that dude went out for a paint <laughs> check, he just got lit the fuck up. That's just what we did. Anytime there's an asshole like that, like... <laughs> We would go for broke one game. You would just be, you know, it's like... Pretty painful too, though. Oh, yeah. the paintballs are pretty painful, bro. Yeah, so that that was the closest we would get to marbles because frozen paintballs hurt like a motherfucker, but it's kind of like going from BBs to pellets. Like, it's not going to kill you, but it's significantly worse. No, I get it. But just that don't be assholes. I don't no, know. That shit must have hurt, though. That shit definitely must have hurt. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. Because we practiced on each other in the backyard to see how much it would hurt. We all got shot once and was like, yep. It's like getting tased. It's like, you do it once, you know the feeling. Never again. <laughs> I'm never getting tased. I don't want to do it once. Keep it at zero. Yeah. my uh, One of my old buddies slash boss... Um, offered me a hundred bucks to tase me once because he had just got a new taser gun with the little prongs that shoot out and he's one to try it. And I'm like, mm, you're going to need a little more than a hundred bucks to get two of those things that I got to rip out of me anyway. And you're going to shock me with them. Fuck that dude. 
No, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't offer me money. To definitely not to offer me money to shoot those shots at me. It was just a horrible sales pitch, which I also uh, I I witnessed one of these terrible sales pitches the other day at the grocery store. You tell me what you think about this. I'm in line. Got a cashier that works the day shift normally during the week. Like, you know, she's got her established times that she works. So. And you know this because. Just because she's always there during the day when I see her. Like, usually when you, you know, work for somewhere. Know, it's a weird thing to say. Like, you know her schedule. Bro. I don't know her schedule per se, but <laughs> I, I know that she's usually. I never see her there when I go at night. And I usually only see her there during the week. So I think she's just somebody that worked up the ranks, and now she gets to call her own schedule, and all the newbies, the baggers, have to figure it out after. You know what I mean? All right. So you're close to your grocery girl. All right. Let's go. Yeah. So that she's she's one that I recognize. <laughs> so the guy behind me is buying, you know, what looks like his meal for the day or whatever, <laughs> his stuff for the day. Like nothing, nothing more than what he needs for this afternoon, you know? And the first thing he says to her is, how's my favorite or how's the best looking cashier here today? And I'm like, ooh, that's a little weird and aggressive. And you know he <laughs> says that to her every day because she is like, hi, whatever. Oh, I thought you weren't going to make it in today because you're a little bit later <laughs> than usual. It's like this poor lady has to deal with this fucking creep saying like how she's the most. And by the way, the most beautiful cashier here. Like, that's very limited compliment, dude. Like, the most beautiful cashier I've ever seen, maybe. Not just at this Ralph's. Like, what the fuck? There's three people working. <laughs> Come on, bro. Do you, think, do you think he gives her the same compliment every day? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This guy needs to step up his game. He doesn't have shit. You know, I feel bad for this guy. I might have to come and go at this time. Oh, it's way worse to be. I I don't know what this guy does or did. However, if I'm going to make a guess that makes this more fun, I think he was like an honorable discharge from the military because this dude (laughs) is younger than me. He's a little bit shorter than me. He's got a little bit of weight on him, but he said that he's retired. And he's not retired like, I made so much money, I'm here for the dom and that's it. It's on sale or whatever. No. He's like, I'm retired because nobody will employ me. So somebody (laughs) paid me benefits for life to not work anymore. The only place that does that is the military. I wonder if it was one of those, you know code red situations where they're just like this motherfucker can't keep up we can't whoop his ass anymore we can't kick him out for anything else let's just say he can't hack it gi jane style honorable discharge get out of here you're too you're too strong for the military you're too strong hey bro hey bro hey bro I don't know. Oh, what? All right. So if we were going to help this dude out, like, what are some good pickup lines that we could help this dude out with? I can't help you. He's been going. I need to know how long he's been going at it with this one whack pickup line first, because she's probably disgusted by him now. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's a gross this thing to do. Calls. And it's a gross thing to seek the same person out every time you go to a store. Like, that's weird. That's gross. Ask him out or don't. Don't just be the there weird, creepy, casual guy. There you go. At this point, his pickup line needs to be the man. I know I messed up all those times, but let me just get her to get one date. Let me take you out. Something simple and straightforward because ain't no pickup line going to work on a girl that you've been calling the beautifulest girl in the store for eight weeks. Dude, you know what he should do? He should just go in one day. The only thing he purchases is a big bouquet of flowers, sets it on the register. When, she, when he pays for it, hand it to her. And just say, did you fall from heaven? Did he have hot food? One of them was a pre-made package of ribs. Oh, but it wasn't hot. Like it wasn't. No, it was hot and ready. Like you can eat this in your car, sir, and you probably will. (laughs) Oh, he should have brought two and had a picnic right at the cashier. Like, like on the behind her, you know, the little space they got, like. Just pay for both and then put the meal out right there. And lay out. This is our first date, baby. Yeah, you can't do that because she's on the clock. 
But you can do some so smooth what, shit. I don't know. They they understand. It's just it's just a shot, man. Like if they fire her for that, like they they're not gonna fire her stuff. for that. But she can't engage on the date for that. She can't be like, oh yeah, no, let me. She, uh, she she might think it's cute and actually give him a real date after that. I don't think she would think it was cute at this point. Had that been the first move? Sure. That's a great first move. Just be like, hey, I come to this store time and time again. I always notice you. I'd like to see if we hit it off. Would you, you know, can I take you to a picnic? Here it is on the belt. That's corny, cheesy, cute, ha ha. You can't buy the same (laughs) shit every single day. And like pre-made, warmed up ribs. Like you can't even fucking cook for yourself, ding dong. You're going to take me out? No thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah. It depends on how long he's been buying those same ribs every day. I don't even know. Maybe it was just Rib Monday. I don't know. I don't know what it is. (laughs) But you know, it was just not. It was not conducive to pick up a chick. Hey, yo, I think we should carry this story out. Do you remember what time you went to the store? I think you should go back. Like like it was. It was like. It was like ten a.m. But she said he was late. He usually comes in earlier. Maybe on the breakfast yeah. shift. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no nanners and pop tarts today. Around, maybe you can go around nine thirty and see if you can catch my man. And man, if he's got if he's got the same food he can go. All right. So then, what do I tell him to tell? Do I give him some of my old pickup lines? There you go. Did you yeah, have any old pickup catch- lines? I know we've been over this. I don't really have pickup lines. Sorry to say, like, back when I was picking up girls, I was kind of the pickup. Like, people used to pick up lines on me. Like, I'm, I was the catch, man. Yeah, you still are. <laughs> Look at that pun. I wish. I fucking wish. But, um, but I mean, you know, I had to do... I'm a man, so you got to say stuff, man. I don't know. I used to say whack shit like he's saying. You know, you're so pretty, girl. <laughs> I used to say, <laughs> nice day gorgeous. for weather. And now I walk up to a girl, and if she's got a ring on, I'll say, oh, man, when's your wedding? When's the date? And if she say, no date, I'm going to say, oh, that's not serious. <laughs> Why are you going up to women that have rings on, Mike? I didn't know this about you, you dirty dog. i say if they had a ring on. I yeah, the if they have a ring, ring on, you too. walk the fuck away. Come on, Mike, you're better than that. You don't need some of that sloppy old... Man, you're messing up the joke. It was a joke. It was supposed to be funny, man. It is. Not to me. I don't, no, no, no. I'm I kidding. Don't up to nobody. I don't want nobody to got a ring on, man. I'm a girlfriend, man, for real. I don't even I don't even lust for nobody else's stuff. So you can keep that, buddy. Wish you the best. You know what else this dude had? Which I don't even know how you acquire this. He had a sunburn on his face from, like, wearing his face mask. Like, he just hangs out outside. <laughs> So it just got like sunburn. So maybe a construction worker, man. I'm just kidding. He didn't have that. But wouldn't that be embarrassing? Is that the worst type of sunburn? <laughs> I'm just burying this motherfucker. <laughs> Is that the worst kind of sunburn you could have? Not that you would have it, but like on your face with like just like a straight vagina covering over your mouth area. Just be like, I eat all day, baby. You think if I was in Cali, I would get, like, darker around this area, but my face would be, like, a little bit lighter? Yeah, because you wear a mask all the time and you love the beach. You would for sure have spots. (laughs) Oh, I need to go get a tan, baby. Uh, No, you don't tan, right? (laughs) A little bit. You just get darker. But there's a couple shades that I can, like, there's a couple more shades. That's what I'm saying. You get, like, a protective layer or two of (laughs) vitamin D on yourself. There you go. You know? So let me ask you this. Speaking of just weird, fucked up things about your body. Have you ever heard of Chalky? Chalky? Or did I make that up? Yeah. When a white guy is ashy, it's Chalky? White people don't get ashy. Uh, fucking check me out, bro. Look, bro, let's stop it. Just stop it. How? How? It's like writing with white white crown on a white piece of paper. Yeah, it's there, but no one's gonna see it. So yeah, true, really true, true. Some... No, it's something where only if I let you within my bubble, you'd be like, "Damn, bro, put on some fucking lotion." But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I may have just coined a phrase or word, chalky. That's white ashy, bro. <laughs> that's what it looks like. That's what that's what black people look like when they're ashy. It looks like chalk on the chalk. <laughs> it looks like the residual <laughs> dust that just trickles down. <laughs> <laughs> Put some damn lotion on that shit. 
<laughs> I've been pl- I think I need to switch lotions. I definitely need to switch deodorants. I think my body is just over over it. Like what lotion do you use now? Right now I use baby lotion, like Excedrin <laughs> or not Excedrin. Eucerin? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's pretty stuff. good lotion if you get the adult version, man. Right? Yeah, probably. I should probably do that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a real <laughs> lotion I got guy. Dry skin and I use lotion. I use that lotion. I use a vino too, though. But yeah, you use it. I don't complain about it. I actually probably got some around here somewhere. Well, give some to me then. Squirt me through the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be isolated for something different. Oh, anyway. So, uh, speaking of fucking new medical terms like chalky, my son's new spelling words are getting fucking out of control, by the way. Achilles tendon was on his spelling words, his spelling list. What? Achilles oh, tendon. They're trying, get, they're trying to get him ready for the spelling bee. I'm like, listen, dude, hey, my kid is not. My, what's that? Do you know anybody else in the class? Yeah. Do you know any other kids? Are their spelling words are they the same? Yes. I mean, we know mix of baby genius, so I yeah, get it. Yeah, they're, they're all the same. I just didn't real I didn't realize that we had enrolled him in medical school already. Like he's in third <laughs> grade. Yo, I know people my age right now that couldn't spell Achilles tendon. They couldn't spell Achilles. To hell with the tendon part, because anybody can spell that. You know what? You know who needs to know how to spell Achilles tendon? Nobody. Mm-hmm. Fucking nobody. Because you know what my doctor needs to be good at? Board games. Not spelling. I need him good at operation, not taboo. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need him to be good at filling out the malpractice forms while my ankle's attached to my asshole. No thanks, buddy. Just do your job. I don't know. Fucking spelling. I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, unless you play up being in spelling bee, spelling really, people don't even care if you spell shit wrong. And most shit, what would you be spelling? If you're writing something on the computer, it'll correct it for you. I know. If you're writing it on your phone, it'll correct it for Which, you. Which, by the you way. You need to know how to spell. You just need to be able to get in the area. <laughs> not true. <laughs> not true, because my autocorrect doesn't know me at all. Everybody has those silly ones like, I'm not trying to say duck. You know, I'm not, Whatever. But mine, I'll type regular words, like I'll type in Jeep, and it'll go, it'll autocorrect to keep. And I'm like, no, I meant Jeep. I just didn't capitalize it, you piece of shit. Like, God, bless America. Like, I'm telling you, this, learn how to spell. Don't rely on fucking machines, because then you're going to get dumb once the machines get sentient, and then they're going to trick you into being dumber and then they take oh, over. Fuck that. If you're Fucking eight, read you a book. Your time learning how to spell Achilles tendon. And fuck what he's telling you. I'm sorry. To hell with that. I'm saying fuck Achilles tendon, but just don't rely on autocorrect. ACH and let the computer do the rest. It'll give you some options. One of them be Achilles, and then the next option will be tendon. Don't worry. That's true. Technology is amazing. But you know what technology can help you with an autocorrect, Mike? A conversation. So if you're a dingbat that uses autocorrect. For everything you do, Achilles tendon to say it. I understand that. I understand that, but I'm talking about more than Achilles tendon here. Sixty percent of the world uses the world world, uses the word facade. I bet they can't spell it. I know twelve people right now that can't spell facade. Why? Because it has a little chingadera in it. (laughs) I don't know what throws them off, but they can't spell it. Okay, (laughs) spell it. Who me? Yes. Talking all this you shit, really you spell it. Are you really asking me? Yeah, fuck yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> the fucking C throws everybody off. It's F-A-C-A-D-E. It's a really easy word. Yes, and the C it's has fun. the the thing above it. I don't remember what oh. it's called. I should. You know somebody that didn't know how to spell it for a while. <laughs> I got them with that about <laughs> three times. <laughs> off, the, off the cuff, you ask them and they be like, huh? uh, nope. <laughs> Oh, yeah. spell intelligent. Never mind. <laughs> Not you. That's why you tell people like that. Oh. Anyway. I can spell. Even though I'm talking shit about spelling, I'm actually a pretty good speller. I didn't even want to spell and be in my day. Did you? I came close, but I never, I didn't reach the mountaintop, Mike. I was in like, <laughs> I think second grade. 
But I couldn't understand spelling bee now. The words they be spelling on the national spelling bee, like, I can't spell that shit, bro. No. <laughs> like, nope. No, I did my you spelling got a bee. Thirteen year old kid. Yeah, I did my spelling <laughs> bee at like the Fox Hills Mall, and I think like, oh man, I just had a weird flashback. I think I didn't spell crescendo correctly. I think that was the word I went out on. I don't know why that just zapped back that. into my head. That was right fucking creepy, either. but cool. All right. Ugh. Give me the willies. Can't spell that either, so there you go. Oh, well, you know what's usually good about medical forms that I had to fill out? You don't have to spell them. You just check boxes. Because I went and got my MRI yesterday for my back. So I had to fill out oh, all man. these medical forms, just pencil whipping through it. But then I did. Oh, I was really? like, I had. How are you feeling? The same. I just want to know how to treat it. That's all I'm getting after. What's wrong so we can get a plan? That's all I need to know. So until then, I'm just laying low, taking it as easy as I can. Fucking being a good-for-nothing pile of shit, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But we do get to talk to you. I was, But while I was whipping through those medical forms, I'm like, I'm going to be here for a while. So I'm going to actually read these things. And one of the options, like, you have to tell them, going in this machine, you have to tell them anything that you have on you. Like, especially any metal. So one of them was eyelid springs. I'm like, eyelid springs? <laughs> okay. I didn't even know that was a thing. All right. So if that's the case, let's turn this medical... Yeah, let's turn this medical form into an a la carte menu. I'll have two eyelid springs, one rubber hip, and some go-go gadget fingers. Let's go. <laughs> let's fucking make this shit happen. Did you Google eyelid springs, man? Eyelid springs. No, because I'm assuming it's for people that can't uh, close their eyelids. So they're constantly, the spring is constantly to hold them open. And when you want to close them, you would push your eyes down. Because I can't see them holding them open like clockwork orange style. And you would, like, or I'm saying like that, and you would forcibly close them. I don't know. So the question is... Can you get it for cosmetic? <laughs> Cosmetically? Dude, some people that get too much plastic surgery should go for the eyelid springs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get a little life in there. I'm, I'm definitely trying to get some, man. That would probably make you look more animatronic, though. Just like it's so automatic, like... Psh, 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 like windshield jump. wipers. Oh! That's what I'm talking about. Some contact lenses that have windshield wipers on them. Dude, oh, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Or like the yeah, NASCAR style, thing, where you have the contact yeah. and you just whoosh, rip off the outside one that's got dirty. <laughs> shoop, shoop. <laughs> just like yeah. trident white strips, whoosh, or what are those Listerine tongue things? Whatever. I don't know. You know what else was on there though that I used to have to check, but I don't have to anymore. Body piercings. You got body piercings? You didn't know this. No. no. How has this never come up? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> or is this something you forgot? What fucking body person do you have? Fucking take a guess, but you only need one. <laughs> I've seen all of you behind me because I've lived with you, so the only place I haven't seen. <laughs> It's the only, well, it's the only region you haven't seen. I don't think you've seen my asshole uh, or my balls. I've but. seen your ass, but I've seen your ass crack. So where else would you, like, unless you had an ass cheek. I didn't yeah, pierce my you. ass cheek. That's for sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, I've seen your plumber, you plumber butted me before, bro. So oh, yeah. I, yeah. Crack. Well, you know, so, I used you to know, be like much we're not, we, Yeah, we, we aren't homos or anything like that. But No, you know, Captain Geach had a metal ascot. You know, <laughs> right on the collar. <laughs> twice! I did it twice! That was the funniest thing I've heard all fucking day, bro. <laughs> you feel better now? I not know this. How did I live with you? Not I don't know. Know this. It's not like I still have it. I don't have it. I didn't have it when we lived together. That's why you probably didn't okay. know it. No, it's not something I bring up all the time. Like, hey, guess what, guys? Okay. By the way, hi, Mom. Um, she's just finding out for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she didn't put it together, you know, man. You know, we did say it in code. We really didn't say it, but we said it. But yeah, yeah. hey, mom, how are you doing? No, I pierced my dick right on the shaft underneath <laughs> the head. Like, I didn't go through the head because I was very nervous about the Prince Albert. 
but like I did one rung of the Jacob's ladder at the very top with a barbell. I did it twice, Mike. And it gets better. It gets better. Both Bless times heart, were with a safety pin. Like I didn't have somebody. Nobody else was gonna pierce my dick. Okay, this, you don't have to tell the world no more. Was it? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> now we got physical. I'm good on that. Let's move to the next thing. <laughs> oh shit! You know what I'm All right. Well, I guess what? Uh, on a, a lighter note, I <laughs> went to the Rams 49ers NFC Championship game, which ended up being a wah wah for the Niners, but it was a hell of a ride. Game, Fuck man, game. dude, it was won. it was quite an experience. How was you, Tart? I know. Whatever the man. hell your last name is. I mean, your first name is. You got like a weird ass first name, so I ain't going to try to put like Jaworski or some shit like that. Jaworski. But yeah, but if you catch that ball, my man's going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. My fucking man is going to the Super Bowl, you shit brick. But anyway. Yeah, how, that was. How was the game? Like, how was the actual game being there? So the I'll tell you. All right. So. so I'll start you off with even just getting the ticket. So I had talked to you about, you know, like. Dang, man, I'm really going to try and go to this thing. I don't know how it's going to work. Like, I was going to try and, like, scramble to pull some, you know, side money together to get this thing going. Um, but then after talking with my wife, you know, we... This wasn't really a factor into it, but in my head it was. Like, when we had first got together, first, first, first got together, and we're like, okay, we're going to ride this thing out till the day we die. So, we're like, she's a Dodgers fan. I'm a San Francisco's Giants fan. We're big, huge into baseball, always happening. So the deal was, if either of our teams went to the World Series, we would do whatever it took to go to the game. So, needless to say, the Giants went three times to the World Series. We went to zero of those games because I'm just I wasn't even going to bring it up. And but by the time the Dodgers were in the World Series, because it took them so fucking long, we. <laughs> We were able to convince ourselves that we could climb out of the hole it would take to go to the World Series. So we did. So in my head, I'm like, okay, if I stack three World Series games up, that might equal about one NFC Championship game. Maybe we could kind of, you know, square this thing out a little bit. You know, and not really, but it was more of just like, it's hard for me to do shit like that, especially by myself. So that was my like... I had to, like, justify it to myself. Like, it's okay for you to do this because you didn't do all those other things before. Don't feel bad. Go have fun. So, couldn't afford two tickets, though. So, I just went all on my lonesome, which was cool. It was fine. I didn't have to worry about, you know, making sure somebody was with me at all times, especially at a big, crazy event like that, which isn't a huge thing. But I just, I got to zone out and just do whatever I want, be whoever I want, you know, in the moment. So. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy the fucking game. That part was rad. So I drove down a little early because the game was at 3.30. So I left I left at like 11, like 11, maybe a little bit before. <laughs> because they they even said on the website, like, get there four to five hours early. We don't know how crazy it's going to be to get in here. But parking is going to be the worst it's ever been. So I'm like, all yeah, right. Because both teams are from Cali. That shit going to be the hell. Well, and parking at SoFi is the worst. It's just the worst. So... Yeah. Parking passes were going for four hundred dollars plus. I'm like, I'm not paying two thirds of my ticket to get a parking pass. No way. So I came up with a little plan, and now I have the trick to get in and out of SoFi for sixty bucks. Boom, done. <laughs> and. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep that magic to myself. <clears throat> if you really want to know if you're going to SoFi anytime soon and you're a friend of mine, just let me know. I'll let you know. Or if you want to share this podcast and tag us in it, I'll give you the information as well, even if I don't know you. How about that? little incentive to pay it forward. How about that? So There you, there you go, Brindo. So anyway, I, was, I got to my destination where I was going to park my car, walk over to... Uh, group of people waiting for a shuttle and so I get over there and I'm just kind of chit chatting with these people older folks uh, two different couples came down from San Francisco they you know they had been to uh, the Super Bowl uh, a couple years ago like they're fans like they're like no we're going we got to go so I'm like all right I like these people 
Uh, we end up getting on the shuttle right in the front because I had kind of like buddied up with these people and they was apparently were standing there first. So I kind of got in the front of the bus with them. So I'm like, sweet, good seats. I get off the bus first. Okay, so, so on the shuttle, do you know anybody on the shuttle? I know nobody. Okay. So these are just random 49ers fans. Yeah, random 49ers fans, but <laughs> it was it was a hometown takeover. It was everybody that was standing waiting for a ride to the stadium was in red. Or if they had like one person in their group was the Rams, you know, dressed up in Rams or whatever, but it was predominantly people that didn't park at the stadium. It was because they had to buy tickets outside since the Rams were being dicks about it and tried to keep everything to greater Los Angeles area. All that does is shoot up the prices on StubHub and all that kind of shit. So thanks a lot, Rams. Another fucking dick move. Um, (laughs) But so anyway, so ride there. Ride's awesome. Everybody's kind of just like chilling, like not getting too amped up. It is, you know, it's noon at this point. Not even, like quarter to noon at this point. So we get in uh, to the stadium. They're not letting anybody into like 1, 1.30. And I'm like, fuck. All right, it's like 12.15 right now. So I'm like, I'm going to bounce to a different gate, you know, because there are already people lined up. I'm going to bounce to a different gate that gets a little, you know, is a little less because people just stopped at the first one. So I go like next gate down, way less people in line. People are much more spread out, casual in line. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick this one. That way, when everybody crunches in, they could just line up behind us. Like, everybody in front of me is not going to condense for them. So, got in that line, hung out for like 45 minutes. And then the only (laughs) thing that they keep saying over the speakers to get in the stadium is like, if you have any drugs or weapons, go put them back in your car, (laughs) like, over and over and over. (laughs) Meanwhile... I've got a joint in my pocket. I'm like, I'm not throwing this shit away for anybody. My car's way over there. And at the end of the game, if I'm stuck out here for an hour and a half waiting for a fucking ride, I'm sparking this motherfucker up because I don't want to have an anxiety attack in a parking lot for him. So I was like, fuck this, dude. So I'm like, no, I don't care about your God blessed dogs. Like there's so many people here. I'll be able to walk around somebody. Fuck these dogs. They're not that good. They're dogs, you you know? So I was like, whatever. Got in smooth. That was easy. So I walked around the stadium for a bit, um, you know? And here's the thing about SoFi, because I'd never walked around it before. Been there twice, but just went directly to where we were going, our seats, and that was it. So I walked around the third deck and the fourth deck, uh, because I was on on the fourth deck. And I kind of like the way that they did it. It's like they're... Their food stands and stuff, it's like on the tail ends where the end zones are, they have like snacks and beers. Like that's, it's just, that's all they do, which is great because they also have tables there for eating stuff. Then like on both sides of that, like basically the corners of each end zone, they have two different types of restaurants, which are, you know, restaurants, but fast food joints. One's like, you know, burritos and the next one sandwiches. And then they have like three or four only on each level like in between there so basically they're like yeah you just come get your food and go sit the fuck back down there's nothing to see here and they're kind (laughs) of like the way that they do the food on the in between like um not on the end zones like if you're between the the hash lines is all the food lines are on the back end so there's a walkway on the outer edge of the stadium like you know a catwalk almost you could see the you know, you yeah. could see all the architecture and all this other bullshit. But that's oh, where they course. that's where they uh, you order your food and get your food. So that the traffic on the inside of this lane by where the seats are, that's free flowing. Like if you're just getting up to go to the bathroom or walk around, there's nobody st- you're not trying to bob and weave through lines like at Dodger Stadium and shit. They have an outside row where you line up for all this stuff. I thought yeah, that was that awesome. Part does the same thing. Yeah, that's fucking rad. Unfortunately, you know, all most of the stadiums that are built in L.A. were built, you know, a decent amount of time ago to where they didn't really yeah. think about all that kind of stuff. But so I thought that was cool. Um, that and then I realized that 49ers and Cowboys literally have the two best looking fan bases in the NFL. Like it's just kind of hands down. I don't know who else has a better looking fan base because everybody in LA is made out of plastic. 
So that didn't, <laughs> like, the Rams fans are like, mm, how much did you pay to be pretty? Didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, save that receipt. You know what I'm saying? Get some island springs. You might help yourself out. Be careful, man. Somebody might notice you outside. I don't give a shit. And, and take and take wrong to things you're saying, buddy. Okay. Well, what if I wasn't talking about that person? That's an egotistical move, man. I think I'm, I'm talking saying, about man. you. I'm only talking. Now, listen. If the guy from the store comes and finds me at Ralph's and is like, hey, man, I heard you're talking shit, I'd be like, you're right. <laughs> you want to fight? I don't know. Oh, so anyway, uh, dude. So anyway, to the game. That was all the stuff shit leading up to the game. The actual game itself starts off with Brandy's national anthem, which was like it gave me chills in the stadium, like literally like goosebumps. And then it was like you look okay, out I and the entire the entire field. You know they do the American people holding the American flag, but. Since it was Rams and 49ers, it was red, white, and blue, the entire stadium. It was just like, it was one of those things where everybody just kind of like collectively was like, all right, man, let's have some fun. That was amazing. You know what I mean? Like a good national anthem can unite a hostile crowd. And I think (laughs) the opposite, a terrible national anthem gets people on and they're like, fuck it. You want to go? That didn't make me feel American or patriotic at all. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Well, so I don't even stand I, for the national anthem. So there's that. Well, that's okay. It's all good. Everybody do their own thing. Yeah, but, but so I got I got to my seat. I'm sitting down, and I picked. I got the fourth seat. Uh, in in a row, seat number four. So I'm like, sweet. That's close enough to the aisle. But to where I get a little buffer if somebody's coming down, I can see and, uh, you know, get myself ready to stand up if I'm holding something. But also, if Mm -hmm. I need to jet, I only got to go over three people. So it's a a (laughs) really great spot. So I get there. I got all my food. I got all, you know, I'm toasty. I'm ready to go. I got nobody sitting to my left. And I got nobody sitting to my right. I'm like, oh, that didn't last long. What the fuck is going on here? So there's... There's two seats next to me that are empty, and then two guys that are Rams fans sitting next, you know, in the seats beside those. One dude who is the closest to me passes out a half hour before the game, (laughs) (laughs) and like five minutes before kickoff, there's one girl in a Niners uniform that comes over to get to the seat and is like going to step over him, but like doesn't know what to do. I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I tap the guy. I'm like, hey. And he's like, (gasps) looks up, and he's like, oh, shit, like moves his legs. She sits down next to him. And then, like, they talk a little bit, and then, like, ten minutes later, they, like, hug and kiss a little bit. And I'm like, okay, that's fucking weird. So then at this point, (laughs) the three seats next to me get filled up, and one of them is this guy named Chris. He was a very, very nice dude. Probably, you know, his late 20s or so. Um, And the other two seats are still empty at this point. So he's a huge Niners fan. He's like, yeah, Friday, got off of work. I was like, you know what? We got to go to this game. So I was like, okay, cool. So they, him and his family bought four seats, hoping to sell one to make up, recoup some of the money. And so we're talking, chit-chatting, and he's like, oh, Niners fan? So... He gives me a 49ers flag. He's like, this is from Levi Stadium. Like, it was in the packaging and everything. Like, you know, I just brought extra in case, you know, we we wanted them. But, dude, you're a Niners fan here. So I thought that was really sweet. So I have a little memento from that game. So then his, these <laughs> other two people come down, sit next to him. Uh, just an older lady and somebody looks like his age, too. So come to find out, that's his <laughs> brother and his mom. The way that I find out about this is uh, about halfway through the third quarter. Everything's going swimmingly, okay? My boy Chris gets up to go to the bathroom, whatever, get some food. His mom's a little hammy, so she wants to talk now. Now she wants to talk. I haven't said a word to this lady all game. It's the middle of the third quarter. It's not halftime. It's not nothing. No break in the action, middle of the third quarter. 
She comes over. She's like, are you having fun? I'm like, yep. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm fucking, I've been this asshole. I know these assholes. It's okay. Fucking bring it on, lady. Just do whatever. I'm still going to watch the game, but I'll talk to you. So she's just like, okay, okay. So after like <clears throat> three minutes, she goes, give me your phone. I'm like, huh? She's like, I want to take a picture of you with your phone so you can see how much fun you're having. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's okay. I'm good. And then she's like, no, no, no. I want you to remember how much fun you're having. And I was like, no, that's o- it's okay. Thank you very much. And in my head, my phone battery has 1%. My phone is an iPhone 7. It tries to connect. It just drains the battery all day. So I also, in my pocket, have a portable phone charger and a cord because I know my ass is going to need bars and battery after the game just in case shit goes down. No, no, think about it, but go ahead. I had 1%. So I'm not wasting Mm -hmm. that 1% on a fucking picture of me. That's stupid. So then I was like... So This was a moment. She's good. Yeah. The moment is, I'm trying to watch a football game, and this broad keeps talking to me in my ear, and I'm like, no, you can't use my stuff to take pictures of me. So I'm like, all right. Like, I clearly bummed her out. And she's like, well, that's our ticket. I'm like, what? She's like, we sold you that ticket. I'm like, oh, now you're trying to fucking guilt trip me into taking a picture? I was like, listen, listen. It's for a reason. I pulled out my phone. I showed her the 1%. I go, I have 1% left. I need my. I need it for emergencies. I need my wife to be able to track me if I get lost or whatever. Like one, I need that. She's like, oh, okay. And then she sits down. I'm like, okay. This is fucking awkward as shit. Meanwhile, another girl comes over, crosses the row, sits down in the empty seat next to me. This is over halfway through the game. I was like, where were you fucking five minutes ago, by the way? Thanks a lot for nothing. Then she sits <laughs> down and, like, reaches over to the girl next to her, like, shakes her hand, nice to meet you. I'm like, how the fuck? Like, are these people selling their seats on social media at the last minute? <laughs> or, like, hey, you can upgrade your seat? I don't know what the fuck was going on there, but that seat was empty. And then it was filled by somebody who shook the person's hand next to him, who, by the way, at the end of the game, shook my hand and was like, nice meeting you. I did not say one word to this lady. I have no fucking idea what's going on at SoFi, but some weird shit. And also... It's a, it's a nice one. Everybody's full with drugs. So everybody's something, me. dude. So then I go... So then lady next to me goes to tap me on the shoulder. I'm like, fucking hell. So then she taps me on the shoulder, and then the worst part, because I'm like, okay, cool. Let's let me just reiterate to her, no hard feelings. I almost was like, if you want to give me your phone, let's take a picture together. Like, I don't give a fuck, just not my phone, lady. What's gonna make this better? And she goes, taps me on the shoulder, and then she just waves me off and sits back in her chair, like, fuck you, I'm gonna be sad the rest of today. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck you, lady. I'm just trying to watch the game. If you sell somebody the ticket, it's no longer yours. By the way, can you give me my premium back? I'll take your. Fi- I'll take all the pictures. Give me my the fee that you bumped it up three hundred bucks or whatever it was. Give me that shit back. I'll be a part of your family now. I don't give a shit, lady. Fucking weirdo. Then Chris comes back. I'm like, fucking thank you, Chris. Now there's only like two minutes left in the third quarter, so Chris comes back and he's just like. Looking at his mom like, what the fuck is going on here? And I'm just I'm just zoned. I'm straight tunnel vision to the game. So then he sits down, I get a little bit of calm because I got a buffer now. I don't I can concentrate more on the game instead of what this fucking witch is gonna do next to me. Then fucking I just got to this seat, starts taking I blatantly taking pictures of me, <laughs> but like from the side. And it's like, I don't know if she's trying to be like, this is who I'm sitting next to. But she didn't take any like this. She didn't take any facing the stadium. She only like every now and again. And I noticed it when I like turned like to talk to this guy, Chris or whatever. Like she would have her phone up and like kind of, I don't know what she was trying to do, but I don't appreciate her soliciting me. 
<laughs> like for whatever reason, like this, look at this guy's fucking booger he's got hanging out. I don't know what she was doing, but I'm like, she she's obviously she taking fucking right pictures. Right or it was of the lady that was sad. I doubt it. I don't know. It was just fucking weird. So she had a good point of wanting to take pictures of you to show you how much fun you were having because you don't have moments like this a lot in your life. Like, this is a moment. That's true. So you should have had a, with all the technology we have in this world, you should have had a video of it. But people need to I did, listen. No. Like if I, I took a, I no, took a like couple of videos of the Rams warming up to their soft little... You know, warm up jazz or whatever. Yeah, but, but of you, like, because you don't know what you look like in the full moment of watching. The yes, game. I do. Like, it because been, it would have been. Beautiful. You want to know why? Because I was watching the game like this, just head forward <laughs> watching the game, mm-hmm. and then she taps me and goes, "Are you having fun? What am I gonna say to a stranger at a football game? Yeah, I'm having a great time." And then I go back to watching the game. I wasn't fucking <laughs> dancing with hula hoops. I was sitting and watching a football game. I actually wasn't talking at all the entire game, except to her son in the very beginning. So then he's like talking, like, what's going on? And then he's just like, just li- whatever. Just just let him watch the game. Just whatever. Just let him watch the game. I'm like, yeah, Chris, you better fucking let me watch the game because if this bitch tries to fucking get in on my shit and like yell at me, I'm going to lose my shit and you're going to have to take her out of here because I'm not doing anything wrong and she's all up in my shit. So luckily... <laughs> That kind of subsided. But as soon as Jimmy threw the pick right in the fourth, their asses were up and gone. They're like, whoop, we're out of here. Fucking thanks a lot, Mom. I'm pretty sure they blamed the karma on her, too. It was pretty good. But that was fucking wild. And then so the game was the game. It was extremely exciting. I had so much fun. It w- I'll tell you what. It was 60-40 Niners fans, maybe 50-50. But... The Niners fans were three times as loud as the Rams fans. Like, not even close. Not even yeah, you close. Can hear it. You can hear that on TV. It was amazing. It was just a hometown takeover, and everybody's like, oh, you're going to shut us out? Guess who's coming? I love it. I love it. And that was everybody's <laughs> attitude. Like, hey, we're going to be nice, but we're going to be loud as shit. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, to hell with being nice. Oh. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of fucking hilarious things at the game. I don't know if it's made the rounds or not, but at a certain point in the game, uh, Big Sean and his old lady, Jenny Aiko or whatever, however you say her name, came up on the big screen, but it said Freddie Prince Jr. and Miss Sarah Michelle Geller, and he freaked the fuck out. <laughs> it wasn't like a... Ha ha, nah, not me. He's like, no, 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 no. Like, waving the camera off. Like, no, no, no. Like, trying to hide. Oh, my God, it was hilarious. Like, how bad is it to be (laughs) Freddie Prince Jr. that you're like, that's definitely not me? No, he probably didn't want to be seen there with Janaeika. You know, they had, like, broken up and shit. They probably going through some shit. No, because then they went back, fixed the marquee, and they were all over each other. He was just really didn't want to be Freddie Prince Jr. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it was pretty amazing, that freak out. But anyway, so then... Yeah, so to wrap all this wildness up, then we ended up walking back uh, to where the, the bus dropped us off on like a side street. And he's like, come meet me back here. Don't meet me at all the other things. Come meet me back here. So we go back there, and they have just a bunch of different buses doing shuttles and stuff. And, you know, so I'm like, I know this game. The first six are going to be full. Let me just walk past all these guys to somebody that has nobody on there. Jump on that one. So that was my plan. It almost worked. He's like, where are you going? I tell him. He's like, oh, I'm not going there. Like, ah. He's like, the like two, two buses up. They're going there. I'm like, that one's already almost full. Like, you can't go? And he's like, no, I got to go to this other place. I'm like, fine. So then the people that I was standing with in the very beginning that we took the bus over, the shuttle over, the wife walks up. And is like, are you going to this place? Obviously, the same place. And he's like, uh, and she's like, you can go there, right? And she was a very direct, proud black woman. And he fucking bent the knee to her. I was like, yeah, we'll go there. And I'm like, sweet. I'm jumping on too then. I wish I was a proud black lady. I would have got this shit handled. Damn. So then we end up, they end up sitting in front of me on the bus. 
and we just we cruised back like in no time. This because our bus was so far back, we didn't have to deal with all the shit traffic going back up to Prairie, the main road. We cut down to side street and cut back to where we were going towards the airport. So we circumvented like twenty minutes by basically hijacking this dude's bus. And then so we ended up going back and then uh, it was kind of nice because I chatted with the old guy. There was a guy next to me on the bus, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm in from San Francisco. He was a solo guy, solo white dude, just went to the game. I was like, yeah, the cool thing about going out, you know, you get to experience other places, whatever. You know, even though it's COVID, it's different people. And he's like, yeah, so we're pulling up. And he's like, yeah, I'll probably just end up at that restaurant, you know, which is local to where we were. And I was like, yeah, dude, after a game like that, you know, it's still fun. Go grab a nice big steak. Just chill out tune out the rest of the night you know and then so we get off the bus and and the uh, husband that i had been talking to on and off you know in the morning and then now he like lights up his cigar outside and he's like go get me the biggest steak they got and all the fries and a little bit of sound mm-hmm. to bounce it out and i'm like hey my man he's like yeah it sounded good when you said it dude and i was like all right well mm-hmm. like i hope i'm not being too forward but here and then i handed him the joint and i'm just like let me be your pusher man tonight, because everything's been working out, and you've been with me the whole time. I didn't need that joint, so here you go. He's like, that's what's up, dude. And I was like, all right. Full circle, it was a great day, great game. Got to meet some nice people. Still a little bit of faith in, you know, sporting events again. Like, people can be nice. I didn't hear about a ton of shit shenanigans going on at the game, you know? No, so, I didn't hear about no shit, yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of nice, refreshing. Beat up, but it was okay. Yeah, but that's always going to happen. You're always going to have drunk assholes. There's somebody, <laughs> when I first showed up, he was getting, like, carried into the bathroom, and he's like, I fucking love Peyton Manning! And you're like, okay. <laughs> We're at a Niners-Rams game, and he's been retired. So there are definitely some people that showed up to have fun, you know, so inevitably they're going to get punched in the face or throw something at somebody or, you know, something stupid. But. There you go. Whatever. <laughs> so other than that, it like you had a good time, man. It was that's a fucking good. blast, dude. And you know, that's one of those things where it's, you know, sometimes you just gotta dig yourself a hole and find a way out because it's worth it. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about, Connor. Anyway. Whatever. That's my son's name. So what'd you think mm-hmm. of the? So staying on football, what'd you think of the Bengals Chiefs game? I think it was a good game, man. I liked it. I watched both the games. The Bengals Chiefs game was a hell of a game. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I thought Mahomes was the next. I don't know, <clears throat> not un, as unbeatable as I thought. Like at twenty-one um, ten, I thought that game was dope. Twenty-three, yeah. I thought it was on. Yeah, that's true. But man. I will say, there's you know, there is a chink in the armor of the Chiefs, and you know, it's just. If you shut down, if you can, if you can shut down their main weapons when they're in a two-minute drill, Patty Mahomes isn't that good in a two-minute drill. If Kelsey and Hill are taken, you know, if they're just double teamed or somebody's spying Kelsey and they got a safety over top of Hill, like, Patty Mahomes is not great at moving the football down the field. He's great at getting those third down runs. He's good at getting those three or four yard chunks. But he only looks for the big play in the two-minute drill, and then he ends up getting sacked. And this time, he got sacked too many times. Yeah, because they kept playing eight-man in coverage. They played eight-man pretty much the whole second half. Yep. But I don't know, man. I expected more from him. Maybe that's my issue. But, yeah, the Super Bowl should be good. It should be a nice shootout, man. I'm still undecided if I'm going to watch it yet. Though. I'm waiting for the rest of this head coaching shit to play out. And then we'll see. I'm going to watch it. We'll touch more on it next week. Yeah, but Josh McDaniels yeah. to the Raiders. How do you feel about that? I think that's probably the best fit for him and for the Raiders. Yeah, I want – yeah, Josh McDaniels – Josh McDaniels – look, Josh McDaniels wasn't successful at first because he thought too highly of himself. But Josh McDaniels can fuck coach. I yeah, well, he also – he can. just – we've discussed this before. He needs to hire a solid defensive coordinator. Yeah, and split hired, duties. Like, the best defensive coordinator because he, like, he had no coordinator, defensive coordinator because he's been coaching with Belichick, who's the defensive master. Yeah. So you do need to hire a good defensive coordinator, but bro, that also means that your your offense has been top notch every year, and Belichick has nothing to do with that. So you have like, like you are, 
the offense for Tom Brady in championships. Like, you are great. You're a great coordinator, bro. Like, just be a coordinator with the head coach label and get the money. Get the head coach money, call the timeouts, and let somebody else coach defense. That's what's yeah. up. And you got to get rid of Derek Carr. <clears throat> why would you got to get rid of Derek because Carr? Because he's not good. I don't know why everybody is, like, basically, you know, I don't know how. If I agree with that. You know how I don't players. Think he's great. All right. Derek Carr is good. All right. Yeah, he's good. There's probably, I don't know. I'm just saying there's there's a lot of other people that could fit that role better. There's not a whole bunch of people that ain't got jobs already that can fit that role better. Uh, and Derek Carr is a top 10, 12 quarterback in the NFL. Barf. No. Barf? Yeah. You can't name 10 quarterbacks that are better than Derek Carr off the top of your head like right now. Joe Kelly. Dan Marino, Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> oh, those, those dudes. I had to stop for a second. Like, what are those dudes on in there? Okay, let me start with Jimmy Garoppolo. That's a fucking upgrade. Yeah. That is not an upgrade. It is an upgrade. Near an upgrade. Absolutely. Even with his alligator arms that can't throw it down the field. That is nowhere near an upgrade. Do you know, like, Derek Carr had like 4,500 pass yet? Like, Derek Carr is good, bro. He's not good. He was in, listen. Ta- he put up these numbers with lesser talent. If you literally keep his threats, Ruggs went out and then his deep threat turned into Deshaun Jackson, who literally is only a deep threat. And his best weapon missed what eight weeks this year. Look, Derek Carr is is. I'll take Derek Carr. I'm not gonna take him over Dak, but if I didn't have Dak, here's the thing: Derek Carr could be my quarterback. Okay, you're telling me that the Raiders' weapons aren't as good as the Niners. And I agree with you. But they're not exactly second tier. Like Debo no, and not. Debo and George they're, Kittle they're are next healthy. level. But Darren Waller's yeah. amazing. Josh Jacobs is amazing. I take Josh. Josh Jacobs is pretty good, but their running game because their offensive line is nowhere is near. Their trash. running game is nowhere near the 49ers running game. So let's not compare that. Okay, so if you put Derek Carr on the 49ers, are we in the Super Bowl? You run the suit. If Derek Carr oh, the 49ers, no, no, bro. If they no. Derek Carr, if they brought in Derek Carr right now, the 49ers would be the Super Bowl betting favorite in Vegas, like right now. Listen, if the Niners Jimmy were G. in the Super Bowl with Jimmy G, they'd be the betting favorites right now. That doesn't make any sense. You think no, they would have beat the Rams is, with what Derek I'm Carr? Is the net, if this was next season, we're going into next season. And your offseason move, nothing else, everything the same. I don't care if you upgraded cornerback or not. And your one offseason move was Derek Carr for Garoppolo. You would go into the 22 23 season as the Super Bowl favorites. My guy. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, bro. With Derek Carr as your quarterback, you would be a Super Bowl with the rest of your team as you have it, as, as it is put together now. Listen. The 49ers will be the all on Super here's, Bowl favorite. Here's, here's, the, here's the big. Here's the here's, crazy? here's the matzo ball. No, you obviously are. But here's the big matzo oh, man, ball that you're not you're, you're not paying man. attention to here. Is Jimmy G goes. That frees up 25 26 million dollars in cap space. You pay Aaron Rodgers a little bit more for a couple of years. You sign Devontae Adams with him as a package. They're unbeatable. The 49ers are unbeatable. And then Rodgers can probably win Rodgers two rings. Bro, like, are you still, like, do you not miss it with Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers just, he doesn't have the statistical fortitude to get it done, bro. Period. It's not about team. It's not about hey, not having hey, pieces. Hey, if you it's can't beat him, him, join him. And Aaron Rodgers and the Packers have always yeah. lost to the Niners in the playoffs. It's not about nobody else. This is a, you know, with the Ben Simmons thing, like he doesn't want to see people fail. It's not about him not being good. Like he just don't want to see people, people to see him fail in Philly. He'll never play in Philly again for that reason. This ain't about being good. Yes, we all understand Aaron Rodgers is good. Something about that playoff pressure is just different for him. He can't handle it. He's not built for it. I don't care who's on his team, what team he plays on. Unless you're going to carry him to Super Bowl like Reggie White did, that's it. They That's the thing. Ten points the other day. Aaron Rodgers Sweetheart. didn't fire all damn year. You're not and listening. They and laid a stinker. Okay. But Aaron Rodgers can't handle the pressure, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me. We almost went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G as our quarterback. Tell me, so what you're telling me is you want you would I would I take Derek Carr right now over Aaron Rodgers to be our quarterback. 
No, because we got to see what this Trey Lance and thing why does. Why do you want to spin it? Like you built, you built your team a certain way. Why would you want to just flip it to this uh, try to fake offensive juggernaut, bro? Like that's not who y'all are. No, and I'm saying call, he needs would, to get in there. It would make you lose on defense. You would have to lose pieces. You spend all that money on offense. You all got a good offense without spending a lot of money. You start spending money on offense, and then you lose the defense. Yeah, I just don't think Trey Lance is the solution. Unless I'm wrong. Unless they see something I that I don't. But if you can swing a trade for Derek Carr, that is a Super Bowl winning move. You need to get that idea of your head because it's making me want Bro, to vomit. I don't understand what your problem is with Derek Carr, but we're talking realistically watching the game and playing the game of football. There's no way you can really think Derek Carr is not a good quarterback. Like, I'm just not... Like, there's nothing about Derek Carr's game that make you say he's not a good quarterback. Bro. Like, I don't get it. I, I can't talk what? to you about this anymore. It must be because you're a 49 fan. He played for the Raiders. That, that's the only reason why I can say he that had, you don't like Derek Carr. He's Curry had like two good seasons in his career, and one of them was last year because he was on the chopping block. I got to give it to the guy. He when his back's up against the wall, he performs. Have, so so do you, are, are you just speaking this, or have you actually looked at Derek Carr's numbers? And what do you consider a good season? Because we can pull up Derek Carr's numbers, and Derek Carr has pretty much a good season every year, especially – with the weapons that he's always had at his disposal. Derek Carr is good. I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. Derek Carr is a good quarter. Okay. I'll never, I'll never call him great, but Derek Carr is good. And he took that team he had this year to the playoffs. Yeah, you know who else is good? Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't want good. I want great. Jimmy Garoppolo is in. You think Jimmy Garoppolo is good? He, if Derek Carr is good, then Jimmy Garoppolo must be because he's definitely at least as good, if not better. So that's my argument. Uh, he's no, he's nowhere near as good as Derek. Derek Carr carries teams. Jimmy Garoppolo gets carried by teams. There are two different types of quarterbacks on two different levels, two different guys. Like, bro, stop comparing Derek Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo. That's so disrespectful. Let me just say that for Derek Carr, you are disrespectful with this comparison of him to Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. After you, you get me, Derek man? Carr's dick out of your mouth, why don't we talk about what you're watching? That's pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you I, watching besides watching... football since you're all pissed off at football? Uh, I'm watching the same shit, man. Um, oh, Power starting the new season this upcoming Sunday. So I'm ready for that because they're finally bringing Tommy back. See, you keep getting excited and then you trash it immediately. So are you excited or yeah. not? Well, see, or is I this one a good for one? For when it started, and then it was trash. But Tommy's back. I always like Tommy. You know, Tommy's a straight killer, bro. So hopefully his season is good. Hopefully his story is good. But I'm going to give him all one season. But whatever, all these new books, spinoff books that he's doing for this shit. And then Married at First Sight, because that's always my shit. And then I started watching Law & Order again. Um, I like the uh, Stables better than SVU, though. Like, I'm really not into SVU. That shit's weird. Um, I'm just not into like the rape shit anymore, like I was about ten years ago. Like I watched all the SBU Whoa, back then. That's uh, don't let me isolate that. <laughs> <laughs> all the uh, you know SVU is back then, but now it's kind of like the rapey shit is weird to me. I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Um, it should be weird. <laughs> so there's a uh, there's a new show coming up on Apple TV called Suspicion. That looks pretty entertaining. It starts this Friday. Uh, it's basically, from what I've seen, it's about like four just regular old British people, like fairly young, 20s. Um, and they get accused of kidnapping a uh, media mogul's son or daughter or something like that. So they're like have to go on the run to prove their innocence or you have to find out if you know, they actually did it or whatever. So it's supposed to be a thriller. Interesting. I'm just hoping that it doesn't take like half the season to get some legs to it, you know, because sometimes those thrillers are like, they just try and be so dodgy in the first three episodes. So you don't know what's going on that you actually don't know what's going on. And then they don't have a storyline. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but so that's coming out this Friday, which I'm looking forward to. Um, Hey, question for you. In the mm-hmm. uh, TV genre. If you were going to do an orgy, would it be with the chicks from Sex and the City or the Golden Girls? Sex and the City. Yeah? So, I, yeah, I had this thing for the freak girl. The little, uh, the, the promiscuous one. I don't know. It was just something about her old ass that had 
thing for me. And Charlotte. I'm, I'm a fan of Charlotte. Okay. The promiscuous one and then the, the real prudy one. Like, how did I do? That's way different side of the spectrum, right? Well, sometimes the dichotomy Miranda's of relationships not, Miranda's are not bad. Actually, attractive. I'm a fan of the Sex in the City's cat cast. Miranda's not bad either. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Yes, I know Sex in the City by the name because I watched old series. I'd go Golden Girls. Me. Fuck that. You know Blanche has got They're, some tricks up her sleeve. <laughs> They're funnier. They're a lot better. I, I, All right, so I'm if you okay, same first. question, but today. What you mean? Same question, but today. Like in, in real story. time. Now there's in only the like is... three chicks on Sex and City, and then you know the rest is necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still go Golden Girls though. I don't know Sarah Jessica oh, Parker. Fucking, I hate her. I, I, know, I don't know who's on the new Sex in the City. I watched the old shit. This new shit. I'm well, the know. the slutty one's not on it anymore, so you only have to deal with like two annoying ones and a prude one. So <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes dead people party more. <laughs> you ever seen Weekend at Bernie's? Come on, Weekend at Bernie's, baby. That's a good movie. I've never seen it. Huh? I never seen it. I know the dance. I know the move. That's all I need to know. Oh, it's funny as shit. I bet it is. I'll, I'm sure I'll watch it one of these days. I did actually, the uh, I did start watching today, actually. I was kind of hanging around uh, waiting on life, and I saw the Pam and Tommy series on Hulu. Have you seen this? What is Pam, like Pam and Tommy from Martin? No, that would be awesome. Even though Tommy Davidson was kind of a wiener um, on that show. Oh. <laughs> or was that Tommy Davidson? No. Anyway. Tommy uh, Davidson had been on that show before. He was pretty a dick on his episodes. So, okay. I mean, okay. So I'm not misremembering completely. Uh, okay. No, Pam and Tommy is, it stars two people I don't know of, and Nick Offerman and Seth Rogen. And it's, it's a series about the Pam and Tommy sex tape. Like how it came out, <laughs> who got it, all that kind of shit. So... <laughs> On the verge of sex tapes, Kanye came out and said there was a second Kim sex tape, but he brought it and paid it off and got it and gave it to her. Wasn't that nice as a husband? Sure. Good for him. <laughs> Fucking, he probably just did it oh, to extort her. Whatever. He can't extort her. She left his ass and she's with that uh, Davidson dude, Pete Davidson. <laughs> nice. That guy gets all the leftover puss. He gets all the puss, period. Like Pete Davis, That guy walks in a room and he's just like, pull your pants up. It's about to get flooded in here. <laughs> that dude gets all the girls. Boy. Wet pussies he's all day. He's like a little skinny, weird-looking white guy, but he gets all the girls. Hey, whatever works. If you're funny and got a hog. That's what I'm saying. I ain't mad at him, bro. Whatever he's doing. That means they should be people. lining up out your door, Mike. <laughs> nah, I'm ugly, man. And I got this bush, bro. I need a haircut so bad. That's why I'm wearing this hat so tight. My barber, man, he, he I only let one person cut my head. If he got kids in college, man, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what doesn't suck is this week's Spotify playlist. We're going with J. Cole and Audio Slave. So everybody make sure you have a happy Black Future Month. And, yeah, support each other. Love each other. Be nice. Do oh, something nice so for a black good. person today. <laughs> 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 but definitely don't go up and try and give them a hug. They will shoot you. Right? That's what happens, right? Just kidding. If you try to just hug random people, any random person you walk up to and try to hug might shoot you. They ain't got to be black. But a black person definitely will shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> be careful out here in these streets. Bro. Oh, shit. All right. Well, on that note, hey, be good to each other. Follow us on Instagram at Black Irish Pod, at Black Irish Two One Three, and at Brendalis Seven for me. Uh, be sure to come check us out each week. Make sure you share, pay it forward, do something fun. All right. Love y'all. Happy Black History Month, too, man. Y'all have a good one. Take care. Peace.